Our scripture is from Jeremiah 1, 4 through 10. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, ah God, truly, I do not know how to speak for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a boy for you shall go to all whom I send you and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. It was about six months ago, I received a call January 14th at 1.38 p.m. Central Standard Time. Our district superintendent, Kevin Kloster, called me and said, are you ready? And I said, no, (laughs) I am not ready. I am not going to move. And he said, but the weather's beautiful. There's very little snow. It's 50 degrees. There's no bugs. Well, you know the story. Deb and I said yes. And we moved to Rapid City. Every Sunday, there's a little more joy in my heart as I meet and greet new faces, familiar faces, names I cannot remember. But I realize that I may have to stay because this week I got a name tag. I kept asking about a name tag and they kept putting me off and putting me off. And I'm thinking, well... We're in this test period, aren't we? (laughs) And noon on Thursday, was it, Deb? Deb and I went to lunch together on Thursday, and Destry called me on the lunch hour and said, Barry, Barry, your name tag is here. (laughs) And I thought, wow, wow, maybe they're going to keep us. Our message today is, are you ready. Will you pray with me? Lord, we come with open hearts this morning. We come to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit whisper, shout, are you ready? Lord, we uh, lift our hearts this day and we pray that through this worship service we may feel, we may see, we may be touched by Jesus. Lord, I pray the words that I will share this day will be lifted up in honor and in glory to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So the question I begin with this morning, are you a good listener? How many of you think you're a good listener? Okay, would you come up and tell me what the sermon was last week? (laughs) Now, how many of you are good listeners? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, uh, I, I consider myself an adequate listener. But I realized the other day as, as Deb and I were traveling in our uh, car, I looked over and her lips were moving. But I didn't hear a thing. How many of you have had to admit to your significant other, I didn't hear a thing? thing you said. Now that's a common occurrence for us. When we travel back to the eastern part of the state, it can be four hours of total silence. And it's wonderful. Listening is hard, hard work. Why? Because we have to pay attention to someone other than ourselves. The story is told of Father Murphy. 
who walked into a pub one night and said to the first man, it might have been the German tent at the Central States Fair, I'm not sure. But Father Murphy walked into a pub one evening and said to the first man he met, do you want to go to heaven? And the man said, I do, Father, I do. And the priest said, well, leave this pub right now. He then approached a second man. Do you want to get to heaven? Certainly, Father, was the man's reply. Then leave this den of Satan, said the priest. Father Murphy then walked up to O'Toole and asked, Do you want to go to heaven, O'Toole? And O'Toole replied, No, I don't, Father. The priest looked him right in the eye and said, You mean to tell me that when you die, you don't want to go to heaven? O'Toole smiled and said, oh, when I die, yes, Father, I thought you were getting up a group to go right now. <laughs> listening, do we listen well? In our scripture today, Jeremiah, the prophet, hears God's voice, but doesn't listen as he should. The scripture said, The Lord said to me, I chose you before I gave you life. And before you were born, I selected you to be a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah, do you remember Jeremiah? He grew up among the priests of Israel. His father was a priest. Jeremiah fully heard and he understood God's voice, but he refused to listen and to be obedient. The scripture said, I answered, Sovereign Lord, I don't know how to speak. I am too young. Jeremiah wasn't ready when the Lord called. He was tuned into his own life and his own world. He had his own dreams, his own agenda. He wasn't ready to listen to hear God's call. He heard the words, but immediately he found an excuse. How many of you are good at finding an excuse? My wife has a list of honey-do things. And I have excuses just as long or longer. Do we listen and obey God? So what can we learn about God's call and our response from Jeremiah? The first thing we learn is that God's call is always personal. Like Jeremiah, God has made us who we are. Look to your left and your right. Do you see anybody that looks like you? Well, yeah, the kids maybe a little. Anybody that acts like you? Anybody that is you? You were all made uniquely different by God. And God gives us the gifts that we possess. As we were preparing to move to Rapid City, my wife was diligently going through boxes of stuff in the basement that we had accumulated. And she came across a box of stuff from a few years ago, many years ago, and it was our high school report cards. How many of you have them yet? We promptly threw them away because they were not good. <laughs> I was a solid C student, an occasional B, an occasional D, but I was solid in the C area. And I'd kind of forgotten that. But Deb reminded me, she said, we do not want the kids to see these report cards. <laughs> And it was interesting that I went to seminary. My life had changed, and my studies had changed. 
and I did very well. It's a matter of our focus. My best class in high school, I got straight A's. The only A's that I got in high school was in speech class. I went on to go into ag business, and I taught, graduated at the top of my class in what was then the Dale Carnegie sales training course. I blew everybody away. So I guess I'm supposed to be a salesman. God had given me gifts. And God had given me gifts to be used for God. I knew in high school that God had called me to be a pastor. But like Jeremiah, I said, I'm not your man, Lord. Look at my report card. I am not smart enough. And I was a leader in our church. I was a leader in every area of my Christian faith for 28 years before I said yes to God's call to ministry. God prepares us for what He calls us to do. Never doubt your abilities if God calls you to do it. God's call on your life is always personal. The second thing we learn is that our response is always a process. Jeremiah questions God. He argues with God a bit, and then he works through God's call. Seldom do we ever respond without going through a process. Perhaps it's spending time in prayer seeking advice from others. Scripture calls us to many things. How many of us respond to the call of Scripture? To give generously. To pray without ceasing. To love one another unconditionally. How many of us live to the promise of Scripture to not be anxious about anything? Our response to God's call is most often like Jeremiah. Who? Me, Lord? I'm not qualified. And we begin to wrestle. We begin to fear. We begin to seek clarification. We want things to be easy. Or we just simply want to ignore God's call. Our response to God's call is almost always a process. A process of learning, identifying, and defining. Third thing is God's call is always a partnership. We are never alone. Verse 7 said, You shall go to all whom I send you. You shall speak whatever I command. Verse 8 said, I am with you to protect you, and I have put my words in your mouth. When we are called by God, it is always a partnership. We are never sent alone. I read a quote in a, a magazine this week, a homiletics magazine that says, whatever God calls people to is the thing He intends to empower them to accomplish. This means we aren't alone in our calling. We aren't solely responsible for the results of what we are called to, and we don't claim credit for those results. Pretty profound words, isn't it? When God calls us, it's a partnership. Now, God called Deb and I to leave our homes in Millbank and moved to North Dakota. And we said, no, Lord, no! There's nothing good in North Dakota! <laughs> or is there? That was the beauty of understanding that God went before us. 
I had no idea how to be a pastor. Some say I still don't. But he sent us to North Dakota, and we had three little churches that just loved us to death. They forgave us. They walked with us. They taught us what it meant to be a pastor. I did a Bible study some years ago by a Pete Briscoe, and he asked this challenging question. In the Bible study, Pete asked, are you called to do great things for God, or are we called to allow God to do great things through us? God's call is always a partnership. And it's never about me or about us. It's always about what God can do through us. And the fourth thing, final thing, is that God's call may not always be permanent. While our response to God may be a process, it may take time, when God calls us to a mission, a purpose, He expects us to respond. Just like my wife expects me to respond when she asks me something. And when I don't, I'm in trouble. God expects us to respond. God is patient but God will not allow us to ignore His call in our lives. God's message through Jeremiah called the nation of Judah to repent and turn from their evil ways. To begin to live again for God. But the nation of Judah didn't have forever to respond. You see, God isn't content to be ignored. The nation of Judah did not repent and turn from their evil ways. And in 587 B.C., the Babylonians conquered Jerusalem. They ransacked the city and they carried away the nation of Judah into captivity. God loved His people so much that He would not allow them to continue in sin. And He allowed the Babylonians to come in and destroy everything and take them captive. Just as Jeremiah had prophesied, God actually honored the desires of Judah to live in disobedience and sin. And in doing so, he sent them into captivity. God's invitation to us comes through the grace and the love of Jesus Christ. Like the nation of Judah, God loves us. And God wants a relationship with us. God is patient with us. But God invites us to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And God calls us to listen for the purpose He has for our lives. The message today is like Jeremiah. Don't miss God's call. Jeremiah gave excuses, but he opened his heart to God's will. Have you read Jeremiah? He did not have an easy life, folks. It was horrible. But he was faithful and he was honored by God. So often we're like Jeremiah. So often we are reluctant to give God our hands and our hearts. You're not all called to be pastors. You're not all called to be leaders, but you're all called to be the hands of Christ. Whether it's to our children in the nursery, whether it's to serving lunch or cleaning the building, whether it's driving the bus or whatever it is, God has gifted you with a purpose 
in life to bring glory and honor to Jesus Christ and to not think that it's all about me. I had a pastor that called me shortly after it was announced that I was moving to Rapid City First United Methodist Church. And this pastor is a good friend, and he's loving, and he's kind, and he's wonderful. And he says, Barry, you'll do great out there. I know you. You'll do great. And I said, I won't do anything that God doesn't put his fingerprints all over. You see, I can't do anything here. I am simply a servant sent to stand with Pastor Michelle, sent to stand with a beautiful staff of this church, sent to share the love of Jesus Christ and let the fingerprints of God be put upon this church. And then to go forth as Jeremiah to do the hard work of loving others. Are you reluctant? Do you say, not me? I'm not smart enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not faithful enough. Never doubt God's call. And when God calls you, He will stand with you. Never argue with God. But if you do, it's okay. He can handle it. But God's going to win the argument unless you walk away. If you accept Jesus Christ, God will use you in abundant and wonderful ways. A life of faith is always ready to say yes to God. Will you pray with me? Lord, sometimes it's hard to say yes when everything inside of us says no, Lord, no. But help us, Lord, to be faithful. To be faithful to open our heart to your leading, to your nudge, to your calling. Lord, we give our hearts to you this day. In Jesus' name, amen.